the, the recovery rate. Dr. Xiaomu, Xiaoming K will give a case report on cervical OPLA. Is he here? Okay. Okay, thank you, Professor Divali. <laughs> Uh, my case is a surgical treatment for cervical ossification to superior longitudinal ligament. The patient is a 67 years old lady. Her chief complaint is unstable gait, stiff in four limbs, clumsy. The physical examination found that her muscle strength in both low limbs is a five minus degree. Epitonia in both low limbs and the Babinski and the Hoffman signs are both uh, positive. And the JOA scale is a seven and the VAS is four. The patient is in the very bad condition. She could not go upstairs to go to her bedroom and uh, she could hardly eat with the chopstick. Uh, the proactive radiological manifestation, including the severe spine cold stenosis, the erosion of stenosis is more than 15%. Uh, we can find an uh, axial scanning of the CT and the MRI, and uh, the lung severe CT a lung segment occupation uh, compares spine cord uh, from the C3 to C6 and the set to section of the MRI. And we also can find the ossification and the posterior uh, longitudinal, posterior longitudinal ligament, which can be classified as the continuous type. So the diagnosis is the cervical ossification of longitudinal ligament from C3 to C6. So what are you going to do with this case? Which kind of approach would you choose? Anterior or posterior or combined? And how to choose? Uh, the anterior decompression fusion has been thought as the garden standard for treatment of the cervical spondylosis. It got a lot of the advantage, uh, not least uh, this advantage to now come with, without uh, any potential disadvantage. So there are uh, universal recognizers of uh, indication for the anterior approach, uh, including the segment of, of the ossification subject to less more than three vertebra. The thickness of ossification, uh, not more than five millimeters. The ratio of spine canal stenosis, still not more than 45%. The K line, the kyphosis line is uh, positive. Regarding to the surgical methods, uh, there are classical ACDF, ACCF. Uh, serious studies have indicated that the decompression effect of the posterior approach is virtually equivalent to that of the anterior decompression followed by the fusion. Although uh, it's not a radical decompression surgery to remove the anterior ossified ligament, the decompression effect uh, induced by the Backward shift of the spine cord, uh, as long as the cervical uh, alignment is uh, maintained in the lordosis. So, when we should choose the posterior approach to treat the cervical uh, OPL? Generally speaking, the segment of the ossification subject to more than three vertebra, and, and if the K line is positive, Lucian of spine canal stenosis is not more than 45%, and uh, ossification combined with uh, congenital stenosis. And at the same time, the cervical lordotic sequence is okay, 
the post approach, the post operative approach will be chosen. The search, as to the surgical matter, uh, there are the open door surgery, like uh, the English door and the French door, and the laminectomy. Uh, for instance, for the semi laminectomy and the laminectomy. Mm. In our clinical pra practice, we would in introduce an additional fact to help to make the decision during the surgical approach chosen. And we usually to draw the, a box on the CET transfer section, uh, like uh, Sudoku, uh, from the anterior to the posterior, pos posterior, we draw the line is named as the basilar line, the safe line, and the danger line. Uh, also, uh, from the left side to the right side, uh, every third we draw the line. If the ossification uh, was defined as the anterior to the um, safe line, the, the ossification uh, mostly could be removed safely uh, through the anterior approach. If the ossification uh, was defined beyond the danger line uh, posteriorly, it uh, would be uh, quite cautiously to choose the anterior approach. And if the ossification is uh, located between the safe line and the dangerous line, the width would be the determined. Uh, once the ossification uh, involved the six box of, on the circuit, um, we will now choose the, just the anterior approach since the possibility uh, of the spinal damage and the CF leak would be very significant. And clinically, there is a, a combined approach. Actually, we could encounter the cases uh, with the only approach, either anterior or the posterior, uh, we could not get a very good clinical outcome. So the combined uh, approach is used for the severe stenosis, such as the thickness of our ossification is the more than five millimeters, the rotation of the resolution of the spinal canal stenosis is more than 45%, and uh, also, the K line is negative. Uh, as we all know, regularly single approach uh, either the anterior or the posterior approach is not recommended uh, with the K line is negative. So, of course, uh, we would choose the combined approach uh, as the ossification is involved in the more than six box on the scooter. Our philosophy about the combined approach is that the post, uh, post, uh, posterior decompression just makes the room for facilitate to the anterior manipulation to decompress the, the, from the spinal canal, spinal cord. So generally, we are choose the uh, posterior first, then we go anterior. Uh, so it's time for us to review our answer. Uh, actually, we choose the one stage posterior combined with the anterior approach. First, we made the semi laminectomy to keep the supra and the interspinous ligament intact as more as possible to preserve the, the P, uh, PLC mm -hmm. and the bird. Uh, Better part of the spinal process with the diamond drop, the diamond burr, to reach a bilateral posterior decompression. Then we made the posterior in the fixation from the C2 to C7. And after that, we turn the patient over and go anteriorly, made the three segment ACCF. Uh, after 
Six weeks of the operation, we followed the patient. The patient would go upstairs by herself and eat with a chopstick. The hepatonia improved markedly, and the Babinski and the Hoffman size both turned to negative. And the JOI scale is 13, and the VAS decreased to 1. The, the JOI improvement rate is the 16%. So currently the patient is doing is well and she is quite satisfied with the outcome. Uh, this is my case. So thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you, doctor. Uh, really, it was an interesting case. Uh, <coughs> but uh, I will ask other speakers uh, Oscar, are you there? Yes, hello, hi. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what, is your, uh, what was your option for that case? I mean, More it's, than it's, three it's, level uh, OPLL, key line is positive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a nice case and very nicely solved. Well, I, I think here, um, <sighs> I would tend to do uh, uh, an anterior approach because uh, the spine was really straight, uh, if not kyphotic. Uh, sometimes if, if the clinic is not so bad, it, it helps us to do some dynamic MRIs, not only to see the number of levels affected, as Salman said, but also because uh, when you do flexion and extension uh, on MRIs, on dynamic MRIs, you can perceive if uh, by flexing a little bit the patient when you go from the back, you have more compression or not, or the opposite. So we find dynamic MRI is quite interesting to define also the, the best approach in terms of avoiding spinal cord damage with, with the positioning. So I think here, uh, the disease was at the disc level. Uh, we probably could do uh, some sort of hybrid uh, construct, uh, do corpec corpectomy, the most affected levels, and do one one uh, ACDF in the less uh, less involved level in a way to diminish the the, the lever harm of the corpectomy, uh, and like that we probably could do something uh, very very stable. But um, if you do it like uh, it was done from the back with a, a good decompression, um, you you cannot be able to to uh, to, to correct for uh, for lower doses. So you probably need to do what has been done, the, the 360 degrees. And, but, but you accept that if you are doing three levels corpectomy, uh, uh, adding a, a cage or grad plus anterior plating will not be sufficient. You should add some sort of posture fixation if it is three level corpectomies. Right. But here, here yeah. you could do two level corpectomy and one ACDF, okay? In a way to, to, two to level diminish corpectomy. The, one yes, to, the, the lever harm for, for the, the, yeah. the corpectomy. <coughs> the options against this are uh, to prevent a postoperative uh, iatrogenic instability is uh, making an oblique corpectomy or skip corpectomy? Well, I mean, I, I think here, here the, the oblique corpectomy, it uh, it's could be an indication because you have, you have pathology. Most of the pathology is behind the disc, okay? But I think there is also a, a stenotic canal overall. So the oblique corpectomy uh, involving the disc levels would be, would be a, good, a good option here, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, my, my suggestion would be doing a posterior laminectomy plus fusion only for this case. Uh, I wouldn't make anything from ventral uh, because uh, I could be a, afraid of uh, ha having dural uh, tear again. And uh, if you, since the lordosis is, is nice, uh, uh, only posterior uh, the compression would be good enough. Uh, another thing, uh, there was a question from the participants 
laminoplasty for OPLL cases, uh, I'm not doing any. Uh, I'm doing just laminectomy plus fusion because uh, to prevent further progression of the OPLL. Damn it. I, I will have a lecture on that. Yeah, okay. My, le my lecture is on that. Sorry for <laughs> <laughs> early, early response. But Dr. Zan, uh, what is your uh, comment on this case? <laughs> um, for me, maybe like an uh, anterior approach. Maybe like, uh, just like uh, <clears throat> Professor Oscar suggested that maybe one level ACDF and uh, one level ACAF to decrease the uh, ACAF levels and uh, to to increase the stable of anterior procedures. Uh, of course, uh, posterior approach is uh, another choice. <clears throat> it's also okay for this patient. But uh, usually, if uh, anterior and posterior both can be choiced, maybe I would like an uh, anterior approach because uh, uh, I always worry about uh, exopain or some C in C5 uh, nerve root paralysis. Uh, that kind of uh, com complications uh, uh, after posterior approach. So I I would like to uh, try to uh, choose the uh, anterior approach. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. there is one question, Dr. Xiong Che. Uh, key line positivity is the indication for anterior and also for posterior approach. What what is the what is your Answer for that. Key line positivity Actually, is an indication for anterior or posterior. If the key line is uh, uh, negative, the, the anterior and the posterior, they are uh, they are not. Actually, I don't choose the uh, with the one approach. If the uh, key line is negative, maybe I choose the, the combined approach. <coughs> if, uh, my answer will be like this. If the key line is negative, then the patient, the patient has a kyphotic cervical spine. So uh, yes. in such yes. case, uh, you must uh, do a anterior surgery uh, or combined surgery. A combined surgery. Right. Or combined surgery, yes. yes. Because it's kyphotic. Yes. Only yeah. posterior surgery is, will not be a good option. Yes, but maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so, Professor Zilari, I, I got a question for you. The, uh, in this case, you were to choose the posterior approach. The idea is that if you go the posterior, make the inner physician, then the, with the stable of the cervical, the, the OPL will stop, right? Yes. Okay. If you f make a fixation fusion, the OPRR is expected to stop. Okay. But there are even very few uh, series uh, that is making just fixation surgery without any decompression. Okay. Atul, Atul Goyal is, is a fan of that. Although Damn Oscar will, will answer our questions on that later. Maybe, just, just a question. Uh, you said the negative K line, it's it's kyphotic spine, and uh, you should go posterior. Okay, that's a general understanding. But if you have multi-level disease on on a kyphotic spine that that you can reduce with positioning or whatever, uh, it's not necessary. No, not sorry, not necessary. Uh, an anterior approach is needed, right? So you have the, the concept of, of a flexible kyphosis that you can correct in a way. Yeah. Okay. And if yeah, you have yeah. multi-level, you yeah. can go from the back. You can right? correct this way. If it's a rigid okay. kyphosis, you must do uh, either anterior surgery or combined. Of course. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Okay. Thank you, all the uh, discussers. And uh, we will skip.